Today we are going over our third and final piece of evidence for seafloor spreading, and that is, of course, magnetic reversals. We've already gone over two key features of the ocean, age of the seafloor, along with sediment thickness. Here comes our third and final piece of evidence, cluing us in to how the continents actually move. All right. Before we can really understand magnetic reversals, we have to know a little bit about the Earth's magnetic field. It does have a magnetic field around it, and that is because of the Earth's core. All right. The outer core is completely liquid metal. You may remember from our discussions earlier, it is mostly iron with some nickel deep inside of the Earth. And because the Earth rotates, the liquid core also moves inside, creating this magnetic field around Earth. Now we've seen the magnetic field in action in compasses, right? The little tiny needle inside a compass is always going to point towards the north, as that is the direction that the magnetic field points, okay? We also are thankful for the magnetic field as solar flares from the sun send off high energy particles into the universe, some of them headed towards Earth. The magnetic field acts like a little barrier and keeps those particles outside of the Earth's atmosphere, keeping us nice, safe here on our planet. Now, if we could see the magnetic field, it would look something like this. We, of course, can't see it. However, there are multiple layers to it. So on that diagram you have on the right-hand side, go ahead and then just draw in a couple of the layers of the magnetic field so you get an idea of what's going on out there in space. Okay, this one does have the little needle on it too, pointing to the north. Okay, so what does that magnetic field then have to do with the ocean? Well, we know the ocean is of course made of basalt. And basalt, being an igneous rock, had to form from either cooled magma or lava. Now we know that magma and lava is that hot molten rock inside the earth or on the earth's surface. It's coming from inside the earth so it's going to have those iron rich minerals just like we find inside of the earth. Now those iron rich minerals have a magnetic property. So there are some minerals inside the basalt at the bottom of the ocean that align just like the compass arrow to the magnetic field. Okay, our magnetic minerals as they cool inside the rock, they record the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. Now the Earth's magnetic field does flip-flop. At times it points north, other times it points south. This changes every couple hundred thousand years. So it's not an accurate, this is the day that it's going to change, but the rock record shows it has changed over time. So what we see within the rocks is that they point, just like a compass would, the direction that the magnetic field is during the time that those rocks cooled from their lava state. Now on the right hand side you have those two boxes. Go ahead and notice the pattern here of the minerals within the lava, right? We don't notice so much a specific pattern. They're kind of scattered every which way while they're in that molten material. But over time, as that lava starts to cool and becomes a basalt rock, we notice then all those little arrows start to point towards the north, the direction that the magnetic field is aligned with. Okay, so draw in those two boxes on the right, how it looks in the lava, and as the rock starts to cool, what happens to those minerals inside the basalt. Now it is important just to mention that we don't go down to the bottom of the ocean and see these little arrows inside the rock, right? This has to be done with a tool called a magnometer, right? We can't just look at the rock and see the arrows. It is a data reading that we get from within the rocks. Now as mentioned, the Earth's magnetic fields does flip-flop over time, so we have a name for each stage that the magnetic field can be in. We can have what we call normal 
polarity. And that normal polarity is when we notice the magnetic minerals and compass needles point towards the north. Right? And we call that normal because that's what the Earth is now. We humans have always experienced the magnetic field to point in that direction. Okay? In the rock record, though, we do see times of what we call reverse polarity, where the magnetic minerals inside the rock point to the south. Okay? Because that is opposite of what we are used to, we then call that the reverse polarity, opposite of the normal to the north. So on the right hand side you have two diagrams here looking at the arrows in the magnetic field. Take a look at which direction those arrows are pointing and label them down here at the bottom. Are they the normal or are they reverse? Which one can you name based on the direction of the magnetic field? Hopefully you've noticed here in this first diagram, they are pointing towards the north. Therefore, this is my normal polarity. And here they are pointing down or to the south. This is, of course, my reverse polarity. Okay? So now that we understand what's happening with the polarities, we've got to plot it onto our chart. We've already included the age data, we've included the sediment data, we now need to get our final piece, magnetic polarity. You need to locate for yourself two colors, one color for normal polarity, I'm going to use red for that, so if you have a red in your area, go ahead and grab that red. We also want to have a color for reverse, I'm going to use blue for that. Now to complete this, you are going to be color coding the boxes at the bottom of your graph. So you have your C4 graph that you've been working on, right, with your continental slope, your mid-ocean ridge, your seamount, your second slope, continental shelf. You've already got in there your sediment data, something like that. Okay, what we're going to be doing here is color coding this bottom section. Okay, you should have this bottom section left blank for us to color code in today. Now here is your data listed on your packet. You are not making a line graph here, we are just color coding the distances from Cape May. Okay, the first one here is reverse, so I'm going to use my blue color to color code the boxes from zero miles, so right at the edge of my graph, all the way to the point where it says 350. So I'm just going to color in that section of those bottom two boxes. Once that area is finished, I'm going to move on to my normal, coloring from where I left off at 350 to the next spot of 630, and so on and so forth, going back and forth between those two data, normal, reverse, normal, reverse, okay? Don't forget, once you get to the bottom here, you are then picking your data back up on this side to take you all the way to the end of the seafloor graph to Portugal. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now to finish up your data. Once your data is completed, you want to do a little investigation of the patterns that you see emerging from your data. First of all, looking at your data, going from New Jersey to Portugal, so looking this direction on your map, what is the pattern you notice about the magnetic reversals? And second, what do we notice the pattern on either side of the mid-ocean ridge? So again, you have your seafloor graph with the mid-ocean ridge in the middle, what do you notice about the data on this side compared to the data on this side? Go ahead and pause while you complete those two questions. Okay. So here's a sample uh, data 
from a mid-ocean ridge, we want to label on here where we have a normal and where we have a reverse. Okay? Um, this section here, the black section, we see that is when we have a positive magnetic reading from our magnometer machine. And when we have a positive reading, that means they are pointing to the north, so this would then be my normal polarity. So go ahead and label this spot here as a normal polarity. The white zones here, this is my area of negative, meaning my arrows are going to point to the south, so this, of course, is my reverse. And we should notice a similar pattern on this diagram as we do on our data. Looking at this, we alternate every other normal reverse, normal reverse. And when we look from one side of the mid-ocean ridge to the other, what we see, and this is the most important fact right here, team, is we notice a symmetrical pattern. Whatever happens on one side happens on the other, right? We have a thick black line with a thin negative. Thick black line with a thin negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, alternating in the same size. Okay, here's another nice image of what's going on on the seafloor. Looking inside the rocks, seeing the actual polarity, but noticing the rocks um, have that pattern of alternating and symmetrical on either side of the mid ocean ridge. Okay. So if I were to investigate, say, a spot 15 miles in this direction and a spot, say, 15 miles in this direction, I would notice that they are the same polarity, right? They are both reverse, okay? They would both be the same age, three and a half million years old. And they would both have the same amount of thickness on them because they're in the exact same spot on either side of the mid-ocean ridge, right? That word symmetrical comes back into play. Okay, kind of talking about the same thing here. On either side of the mid-ocean ridge, we notice the same magnetic polarity, the same age, the same exact rock type, meaning they had to come from the same exact rock formation. So our last big point here, guys, is this tells us that each pair of stripes on either side of the ridge must have formed at the same time, right? And they must have formed not only at the same time, but also from the exact same place, the mid-ocean ridge, right? Or the MOR being our most important ocean feature at this point. How this occurs? We know the magma then pushes up from that mid-ocean ridge, or the MOR, and it slowly cools and starts to create new crust right at that spot. Okay? As that new crust is created, it pushes the older crust apart and further away from the mid-ocean ridge. Over time, as that crust continues to grow and keep coming out of the mid-ocean ridge, we notice that those continents are moving further and further apart, right? Since Pangaea occurred 20 million years ago, we've noticed the continents getting further and further apart, millimeters a year, okay? Last thing we have to do then is just add a few things to our diagram. You want to make sure that you add in magma underneath the mid-ocean ridge, just a little pool of it showing that it's coming up and out of that spot on the mid-ocean ridge, right? And as that occurs, put in some arrows showing the direction of those plates. So as that magma comes up, just like we saw in our demonstration, the crust moves apart at that location, moving away from the mid-ocean ridge as this new magma oozes up and pushes that older crust away from the younger crust, the mid-ocean ridge. Okay. You've got a couple questions to answer in your summary as we've completed our notes. Make sure those are ready for the next time we meet.